Previous since everyone there has been here previously, I will not be redundant with this information. But this tells you not only the upcoming meetings, which are the same dates we advertised at the beginning of the year, but we have updated those with some topics um, from feedback from advisory council and just stakeholders in general from around the district. So next time in February, um, just before the Super Bowl, we will be talking about the 13-14 calendar and give you some rationale as to why we're talking about that again so soon today. And then we're going to talk to you about IB. It came from a suggestion that we um, have some advisory council information on our International Baccalaureate District Initiative um, here at Advisory Council, which I think is fantastic. We know that will carry over, so we'll carry that over to the 21st. And it's very appropriate timing because we'll have an authorization visit of all of our elementary schools in April, a month after that. At our last advisory council meeting for the year, we're going to do a year in review, kind of get some feedback since this was a new format this year, um, as to how stakeholders feel like this was, as far as giving input and having a part of the process, and forecasting and looking forward to some big picture items for next school year, as well as any format changes that we may want to lend to suggestions for the advisory council. So we're going to start. Uh, Dr. Milliman is going to do the school calendar update first. Um, for those of you who just joined us, we're going to try to crunch you guys into these three tables right here. So if everybody could kind of join a table, um, these three tables for our group conversation so we don't have real sparse groups, we'll condense our, our efforts here. Thank you. Uh, school calendar was uh, adopted by uh, the school board uh, recently, and uh, this is the new format that you will see on our school website. You can find that in a couple different locations. You can certainly go under family resources, and, and there's a, a link in the calendar there as well. Um, we changed the, the look of it a little bit this year to add some contact information of our schools and, and things like that. We, we assumed a lot of parents probably print this out and put it on a refrigerator, so uh, we tried to put some, some things on there that might be helpful to you. Uh, in that process, um, we did uh, at this point leave uh, the school hours uh, portion of it as uh, to be determined uh, as we continue to discuss that uh, even this evening. So um, this is the new the new look. They did adopt the, the calendar they said on December 14. Um, the 13-14 calendar will be discussed at the February Advisory Council meeting. You may have seen that in a previous slide. It's talking about um, the process for. Uh, discussion of the 13-14 calendar, give you some feedback on um, your thoughts in the process, but also wanting to finalize the 13-14 calendar this school year, this spring, uh, as a goal. Uh, we'd like to give everyone, staff, uh, community, parents, everyone a, an opportunity to plan ahead uh, for a two-year uh, calendar, at least to know what's going to happen for the next two years. So I think that that process will move uh, pretty smoothly uh, as we um, discuss uh, advantages and disadvantages from, from adopting this uh, 13 calendar. Uh, and that's what we'll start discussing in February. So I give another opportunity for people to, uh, to give us feedback. Study the school hours is uh, continuing and uh, we're hopeful that we'll take a recommendation to the board uh, next month uh, for school hours. And this is sort of the last uh, last effort of community feedback in this forum, but we are always gathering feedback by email. Um, we're continuing this. We just finished another survey or have a survey up. It's still live, isn't it, Dr. Woodson? So yes. The current survey is still live, actually, um, with the uh, school hours option. So we are continuing to gather feedback. I answered two or three emails today. Uh, of some folks that just emailed me directly. So that conversation will go on up until uh, adoption uh, of the school hours. Just want to spend time, we do this in every setting, just to remind ourselves of the, the goal of, of looking at a different school hours format. Uh, certainly what's best for students. Increased instructional time, specifically at our elementary level. Dr. Woodson has said on numerous occasions that we do have shortest elementary day in Marion County uh, and certainly the, the main goal of looking at student hours is to address the length of our element, elementary day and to do so without impacting the other levels instructional day uh, to a significant degree and to do so without cost so you know no no big no big task there you know when you 
you're looking at transportation and all the challenges we have, uh, trying to avoid making it cost any money and to impact anybody else. So that became a big challenge as we looked at various options. We sat down with the transportation department uh, months ago, uh, looking at scenarios. Um, every district is unique. I think that's come up uh, in this setting as well. Um, and distances between schools and drop-off times. And, uh, in our case, the fact that our high school drivers must drive an elementary route, <coughs> that impacts the sequence of uh, when uh, uh, high school must be in the sequence and elementary must be in the sequence. So all of those, th all of those things came into play as we've been uh, looking at the various <coughs> As of this past uh, week or last or a couple weeks, just a snapshot of some of the uh, results uh, of the Survey Monkey uh, and, and feedback on the school calendar. Uh, what we've done is continue to compile the most common comments uh, from our stakeholders on student hours uh, as we've looked at the various options. And based on the surveys and advisory council meetings, conversations with parents. We have made some adjustments to some of our early options. For example, um, school hours were adjusted in option two uh, based on feedback from, from this group. Um, starting high school five minutes later, uh, one of our early, early versions had high school starting at 7.15. And uh, I think the option two that you'll see this, uh, this evening or you'll see up on our website as uh, high school starting at 725. Uh, another option that was brought to our attention in the last uh, several days has high school starting at 720. Uh, but that was adjusted uh, based on feedback from the advisory council and from the survey. Um, the non-negotiable non items that we had to look at, again, I mentioned earlier, we had to keep these in the forefront of our mind, that all high school drivers also drive an elementary route and the drop times and pickup times between high school and elementary must allow for this. Um, we also have tried to, in the time frame of these options, build in time to eliminate some of the late buses um, that we are dealing with now. We're, we're very tight. Our schedule is very tight right now, getting our buses from uh, one level to the next. So as we looked at revamping the student hours, that was part of the conversation as well. The high school in time uh, needed to be conducive to athletic travel times, extracurricular travel times, um, certainly uh, putting buses uh, on the roads at certain times caused a, a great deal of uh, issues for uh, our extracurricular activities. Travel times <coughs> in schools, those are certainly some things that we cannot change. Um, the time between routes, as we mentioned before. And the budget uh, doesn't allow for a two-tier system. And that, that speaks again to the fact um, that uh, obviously most of our, the elementary students, more elementary students ride the bus than any other level. And therefore, that's why our high school drivers are assigned to elementary routes. And so that's what that bullet speaks to. And that's why um, we have that, that three-tier bus system. We're not able to afford to add the number of buses and number of drivers to our fleet to accommodate for just having uh, two pounds of buses. So it says note the pros and cons on your handout. Um, I think, I'm not sure that we got a handout this evening. The pros and cons um, that, that we have compiled to see if we're here or not. Yes, here we go. Um, some pros and cons for option one, um, which was I think it's still up on the website, actually. Is it the option We are still getting feedback on it right. from the survey monkey, but you'll see from the communication from Soup Scoop, there is only one advantage and lots of disadvantages that are redundant um, for this option. And for that reason, we really feel like we can narrow the options down to option two and three, which Dr. Miller will talk about. Yeah, we, these are just a, a, a <clears throat> partial list of the issues with option one. Certainly there are some research that supports the later high school start time, sleep patterns, et cetera. And you can ignore that research, it's certainly there. Um, but the biggest negative is bolded there about the fourth bullet, that that option impacted the high school instructional day by over 3,000 minutes uh, over the course of the school year. And if you remember, the early priorities was to 
length of our elementary day without substantially impacting any other level. And so we can look at all the various pros and cons, but when we get to that particular bullet, that's just a very, uh, that's just a very compelling uh, uh, argument there that we just can't uh, justify in our minds uh, eliminating that much instructional time for the high school. Uh, we can talk about uh, late start times and research and, and whether uh, you're emphasizing extracurricular or co-curricular activities, but when you're looking at just the instructional day, uh, that was a big piece to that. I mentioned some of the other ones uh, earlier that, uh, that caused some issues as well. The middle school did have some uh, additional issues with uh, in, in this option going so uh, going so early uh, in the sequence. Uh, the time between dismissal and the start of their extracurricular activities, uh, visiting teams that wouldn't be uh, really at the middle school for an event until after five o'clock. You can look at the number of students that would stay to attend the event or to be participants in an event. You're looking at three hours of time elapsing between the end of school and the time that the event would start. So that caused some significant uh, challenges for our middle school administration as well. So that's why we've moved on to, uh, to the options two and three, uh, which we want your feedback on this evening as well. And option two, uh, that one has stayed pretty constant over the last few a uh, few weeks, several weeks. Uh, again, as we've adjusted uh, based on your feedback. Uh, in this particular option, high school would start uh, first in the sequence at 725, and it's 246. Uh, it's a seven hour and 30 minute day. This is uh, the same amount of instructional time as the high school would have now. It would adjust the passing period slightly uh, to accommodate for <coughs> the loss in the overall day, uh, but the impact in the classroom minutes would remain, uh, would not have any impact on that level. Middle school would actually gain 15 minutes per day. It would start at 9.10 to 4.15. Not a real significant change over what their current day is. And we would gain 65 minutes uh, per day at the elementary level with them starting at 8.15 and their day ending at 3.30. Now those times uh, that are on the screen are the student day times. They don't reflect bus drop times. That's the that's the, that's the day of the student day. Uh, option three, which was presented to us in the last uh, several days, uh, is again up on our district website right now. There's a survey. Yes. I, I think option three is really your option one. Mm -hmm. yeah, information. It look, maybe we got a flip. Yeah. It's got the middle school starting at 720. Yeah. Maybe we got a flip. Uh, should be, we can get to that. The, the option three should have high school starting at 720, Linda, correct? Um, yes. 720, yeah. yes, but they don't get out at... Yeah, we made, we made an error. Yeah, all of that's not right. Yeah. Is the elementary correct or not? No, the elementary is not correct either. Hmm. Thank you for catching that. We just made this uh, switch today. And we actually proofread it with three, three different sets of eyes, so I'm not sure why that got passed. I think it's right. It just helps out, Mr. Goss. Do you have the, well, those times? Yeah, 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 it's right for option one. That's option one. That's option one. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, option three. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. We're going to bring in copies for each table to have several copies of the right. <laughs> we must have deleted the wrong column. We, you highlight and delete, and you deleted the wrong column. So thank you for pointing that out. We'll give you copies of the table basically adjusted for the high school option to start the day at 720 rather than 725. Uh, Linda, the, high, the elementary day started at, in, in your, in the option that we discussed. I just, believe just, it. Just for point of the conversation. There we go. The elementary day would start at 825 and then at 320. And the middle school will start at 9:20 and then at 4:10. So we'll make copies. You got copies here in front of you. We'll slide these around so you can see that. I'm going to slide past this so you don't get confused. Okay, so you aren't looking at the one on the screen and comparing it to the one on your on your table. Advantages to option two. So far, this is the feedback that we've received. That. Uh, 
all the school time seemed appropriate, increase the school time for elementary and middle school while keeping the high school time consistent, more time for after school activities, and it was similar to our current day. It's really only about five minutes different um, for the high school and the middle school. Anyway. Disadvantages too long of a day uh, for elementary school has been some of the, the feedback. Uh, perhaps uh, impacting some after school activities. Um, having school start time spread out over two hours, difficult for working parents. The research bullet is the third bullet there uh, with, with high school patterns. Um, early morning times for high school students driving and uh, the longer school day for elementary. Now, when you look at option three, this is when you're looking at advantages and disadvantages, not the error that I put up there. It's the one that's about five minutes uh, different. All right, so uh, make sure we get that part straight. These are these bullets are correct. Uh, again, similar advantages because they are similar in starting and end times. Uh, all school times appropriate for grade levels or early release time. High school better option. Um, Gives elementary longer school day, but not dramatically. Um, and again, you can you can superimpose the advantage. Uh, they're the last bullet on the on the, on the first option as well. Um, students getting out to high school around three o'clock uh, doesn't impact the after school activities, jobs, etc. Uh, disadvantage of reducing high school day by 20 minutes. Uh, there is an impact of between a thousand and two thousand minutes. Uh, over the course of the school year uh, at the high school. Uh, it's about 20 minutes total. Uh, when you subtract out the nine minutes uh, that we had already adjusted for in option one, which we would absorb over passing periods, um, the impact is somewhere around 11, 12 minutes uh, a day times 181, um, because some of that might be taken from student announcement times, uh, a little from one period, a little from the next period. Uh, we gave a range of saying between 1,000 and 2,000 minutes because it would depend on where that time would actually come from outside of the passing periods. Uh, Late of elementary school start time for working parents. What that refers to is uh, parents uh, wanting to uh, uh, make sure that uh, um, they have time to pick students up, etc. Concern for middle school after school activities, early start time for high school, late dismissal time for middle school, um, and teams having more supervised time. There's more and more feedback coming in, as I said, uh, on student hours. Uh, we want your feedback one last time this evening um, because we're going to be again taking a proposal to our school board in the next month. Again, please keep in mind as you keep, as you get feedback at your tables, and Dr. Winston's going to turn things over to you after she talks a little bit about the strategic plan. That again, the, the driving objective of the student hours piece is to create more time for our elementary students by not negatively impacting middle school or high school instructional day, and to do so without a significant cost to the district. So, um, when you're looking at two-tiered systems versus three-tiered systems, again just a cost we couldn't incur in adding so many drivers and routes and contracts, etc. Um, difficult to compare one district to the next. Uh, one of my pieces of feedback to a uh, stakeholder today was a comparison of some districts that are also on a, uh, a three-tier system like us. Uh, difference is um, the distances between their schools are different. Uh, the number of stoplights between their schools and homes are different. Um, there are just certain things that are not changeable. Uh, we, we can't change traffic patterns and, and those differences. So they, even though schools may have similar tiers of buses, each district is unique. The square miles are different. All of those things factor into it. So, um, our transportation folks are here today. They presented at, at previous uh, advisory council meetings. Um, they can answer questions as well. I can um, get questions from your tables and we can ask some clarifying questions if we need to. Um, but boy, these have been vetted 
many, many times. We, we've, uh, again, we started this conversation months ago, um, looking at different scenarios. It takes, gosh, I don't want to guess, it takes months uh, to, to route a district, and we've asked them to do months worth of work in, in days sometimes, trying to just run different scenarios. And uh, they've done a great job of looking at that. Um, so it's just continued to, to create these barriers and we can't make them as part of this conversation. So that's why we've narrowed it down to those two options. Um, we felt like uh, that was the compelling evidence and feedback from this group and through email and through surveys. Um, so that's what we want your feedback on this evening. So. Here's what I'd love to do, because the purpose of us coming together in this format is to have um, very stakeholder voices at the same table. The best comments I've had about these forums is that um, Dr. Woodson, when I heard that parent explain it in that way, it helped me understand it a little bit better from the parent perspective and vice versa. When I heard that staff member talk about the reason why that can't be, I finally understood. So what I'd like to do is mix you up a little bit. We're only gonna work from these six tables right here in the middle. If you are a parent, point something million dollars, because it involves adding to our bus fleet and adding to our drivers um, to make the perfect solution for student hours. Um, again, what we're trying to do, just to keep it on the forefront of everyone's minds, is extend the elementary day without compromising the current integrity significantly of our high school and middle school schedules and without significantly impacting um, the cost in our transportation department. So it's a huge challenge and all of the feedback that you give really makes a difference um, in what we're trying to consider and the thoughtful analysis we're doing of all of the feedback. The different stakeholder voices also really make a difference. Um, you know, we've done some preliminary planning, um, but you hear the same kinds of concerns when you talk to the administrator group, you hear similar concerns when you talk to the teacher group, you hear similar concerns when you talk to parent groups, but when you put all those together, as you just saw in the same conversation, you hear a wide range of viewpoints. So I really appreciate everyone um, sharing from their own vantage point. Again, we hope to continue the analysis of this, but to get a, um, a recommendation in front of the board next month. Questions I had around the room was, why next month? Why can't we take some more time to do this? Because Mrs. Howard would quit on me. That's why. Um, our transportation yeah, department um, needs months and months to route for the next school year. School starts August 6th next year. So they have a less condensed time, and they usually start routing right now for next year. So they're already a month behind by us taking something to the board next month and by moving it to March any time would really put them in an impossible situation to do routing well and done the way that we want it done here in Washington Township. So it's not that we don't want wealth of and months and months and months of feedback, um, but the past four months we've been taking feedback and we really need to get something in front of the board so our transportation department can get working on the wealth of our and Tammy who does the routing, all of the work done that needs to be done there. So thanks for your patience through this big stakeholder input process. We're going to transition to the strategic plan. This has come to the advisory council twice during first semester. The first time we didn't call it the strategic plan, so you may not remember. You participated in an activity where you moved around and you talked about what the district is doing well and what you thought the district could really improve on. Um, that gave us direct input on our strategic <laughs> plan. From that, we took that to all of our five divisions that lead the school district and had conversations about areas that we could really focus on. Obviously, if you focus on everything that needs improvement, nothing gets done. So we really needed to hone in and, and fine tune what the areas of improvement were. Then we came back to you later first semester by division. And this is the um, advisory council that I got the, the wealth of great feedback on because we had the five division leaders of the district facilitate five different conversations and stakeholders rotated. So you sat with the chief business officer um, for a small group conversation and talked about um, finances for the district and gave input. Um, I got great feedback from stakeholders that was just nice to sit down with the top leaders of the district and talk about their division one on one. <laughs> From that, each division leader crafted goals. Um, obviously, they've been working on this for about six months, but that helped them fine tune their goals. So there's been six months of work done on the strategic plan. Throughout this time, we've been educating the school board, in which we have a school board member here, um, Mr. Kite, and we have been fine tuning and refining it. One of the big major pieces we've done since the beginning of school till now is take out 
the entire action plan, which is how we're going to achieve those goals, into a supplemental document. If you look in the business world, um, the medical field, even other school district um, strategic plans, they are very slim. They are very concise. You can, within a few pages, pick up what the key focus areas of the district are and walk away. The other massive document that is pages and pages long talks about all the things that we need to do and align to to get some of those goals accomplished. That work changes over time. Sometimes legislation, as we saw this past legislation, changes what we have to do or how we can do it. Sometimes we learn from things that we're doing in the district a way to do it better. And so that action plan is going to be a working document over time um, as a way to meet the goals on the strategic plan. So what I'm going to share with you today are our narrowed down goals for the strategic plan. Know that there is a wealth of information that's called the action plan that goes behind it. And then the focus area for you tonight, obviously I'm not wanting input to change those goals a week before it goes to the board for a vote. But the input I want tonight is on how we communicate this strategic plan after the board votes in a week on this strategic plan. Regardless of if there's some minor tweaks or changes or recommendations from the board, how do we communicate this to the wide range of stakeholders who we have represented here in a way that's meaningful? So to go over the goals, and these goals are not listed like this. These are just the big key areas. Obviously, everything has a measurement to it and is time bound. Um, and all of those details um, you can see on the draft or strategic plans that we presented to the school board thus far. These are just the key areas. So this is the helicopter view of the strategic plan. But for the teaching and learning division, which is one of our five divisions, um, they're going to work on a quality assurance process. And we've talked about this a lot. How do we know we're doing what we said we want to do? That's what quality assurance is. It's knowing along the way. Um, the state requires us to do one dipstick once a year called I-STEP or ECAs. We know that's not enough. I can't get on the scale once a year and know if I'm having a great, a great weight loss program. I have to get on that scale frequently to know if I need to modify things along the way. So that's what quality assurance does. Is it puts that dipstick in frequently so we know how we're doing. So there's a whole process being developed for that. Our IB authorization is obviously a huge threat in our district, so that is a very big part of our strategic plan. Our district accreditation is also very important. Um, we have a whole process for that. Our measurement of progress for special populations, so this would be our English as new language students, our gifted population, and our students who qualify for special services. Um, we also have identification of, a, of a, a effective instructional practices for those students. Um, deployment of intensive interventions for those special populations I just mentioned. And of course, we will continue progress in our language arts and math at all levels. For our operations division, that's a second di major division out of the five, um, we want to continue our work on our master facilities plan. Um, that is obviously a major part of the operations division, as well as our energy efficiency study. We wanted, there's lots of different areas on energy efficiency that we can study to improve that um, for the entire district. Human resources is a third of our five major divisions and their major work um, came out of the 2011 legislature which requires us to develop, deploy, and implement a comprehensive evaluation and compensation model for all certified staff, administrators and teachers. That is major work. So that's why there is one isolated goal for human resources, because that is a huge, huge piece of work. Business services, obviously the annual budget is a continued goal for that um, division. And strategy development around um, upcoming challenges we may see financially for the district. Development of the compensation model, again that's required by the 2011 legislature that we come up with that to meet the new guidelines of the law. And a transportation review. Um, we have begun that somewhat with our efficiencies there, but that's going to continue that obviously is a, a wealth of work as well. And so that's a goal for that area to continue that study. Our technology area, um, draft goals that we're taking to the school board are around um, the national technology standards um, and assessments and delivering those electronically to our students, as we've seen um, is the direction of the state. So on the other side of that feedback form, you're going to see some key questions. The first question is about those goals. With what I just said, 
what is some wording with some of those big areas of goals that you think you can't communicate that way to my stakeholder group because we don't even understand what that is. So what are some big key words of that, those major pieces we just went over that really need clarifying in a different way when we're communicating to different stakeholder groups? We also want you to take a look at what are the best ways to communicate. You can say, I am a stakeholder representing um, parents and here's how I would best receive um, the strategic plan being communicated to me. Don't give it to me in a, some mailing, you know, because I throw those away. Give us that kind of real feedback. Also, um, you know, somebody told me I don't read the strategic plan. They want something simple. So we are working on a graphic to kind of pull together all of the parts of the strategic plan. Ellen Rogers is nodding because that's kind of her charge to work on pulling together a graphic. Um, as you see in most businesses, they'll have one graphic. The IB organization has one graphic to display their several page um, strategic plan. So we are working on that, but we certainly don't want to delve into that too far before the school board has even approved the strategic plan. So know that that'll be a piece of work. But then the best ways to communicate um, the plan to the broader community. Um, you know, you can, the strategic plans aren't one of those things that people say, oh, please tell me all the details. Um, but we certainly don't want to not communicate it because it is the focus of, of our district for improvement for the next three years. So feedback from you, from your perspective as the stakeholder you're representing today would be fantastic. Um, if you could just have that same uh, key person at your table be the, the writer um, so that we have one feedback form per table and you can get started on this. Whenever your table finishes kind of their input or their feedback on this, you may go ahead and leave. We do not need to pull back together again. And I can flip back to those goals if that helps you for that first what needs wording clarification piece. Just let me know and I can keep flipping back and forth.